All right, we're at chapter 11, uh, energy and thermal processes. I'm uh, gonna go through this pretty quickly, the whole chapter uh, in one lecture. I know it makes for long lectures, but uh, uh, we wanna get through this uh, thermal physics uh, pretty quickly. So energy and thermal processes, the picture is the uh, house in the winter, uh, thermal uh, thermograph image. And you can see some where a lot of the heat is seeping through the house. Uh, and then you can also see the cold spots in the house. Uh, okay, let's, uh, internal energy, uh, U, is the energy associated with the atoms and molecules of the system. Heat is the transfer of energy between the system and its environment due to a temperature difference between them. So heat is the transfer of energy between the system and its environment. Uh, and we use the symbol Q for heat. Um, so heat is a transfer of thermal energy just as work is the transfer of mechanical energy. Uh, so the units of heat are the calorie, uh, the energy necessary to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14.5 degrees C to 15.5 degrees C. In other words, the energy needed to raise uh, one gram of water by one degree C, and one calorie is equal to 4.186 joules. Um, specific heat, now different objects require different amounts of heat to raise them uh, one degree. Um, the specific heat C is equal to the amount of heat needed per uh, mass per change in temperature, and the SI units are joules per kilogram degree C. Uh, so Q is equal to MC delta T. So example, you have the, uh, 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 the mass of water equals half a kilogram and the change in temperature is three degrees. So uh, Q is equal to the, uh, the amount of energy needed, uh, the amount of heat needed in joules is 0 0.5 times 4186 joules per kilogram uh, C um, at three degrees temperature difference, that's equal to 6.28 times 10 to the three joules. Now, where did we get that 4186? Well, you look at the table over here. These is, this is a specific heats of some materials at as atmospheric pressure. It's given in, in joules per kilogram C. It's also given in calories per uh, gram degree C. We're gonna stick with joules per kilogram per degree, per degree C. We're gonna do an experiment. It's gonna be a virtual experiment. I'll perform it and uh, give you the data. We'll do that on Tuesday. It's the specific heat of metals. Uh, so you should have a, a lab book and you're gonna be looking at the specific heat of metals lab. But let's look at some of these. Aluminum, uh, 900 uh, joules per kilogram per degree C. Uh, copper, 387. Um, water, water is where we get the 4186, 4186 joules uh, per uh, kilogram per de degree C. So it takes, for one kilogram of water, it takes 4186 joules of energy to raise it one degree. Okay. Uh, the heat in internal energy, uh, I don't think they have uh, sand. They don't have sand, but uh, sand has a, a much lower uh, specific heat. So if you have a beach, the, since it has a lower specific heat, it doesn't take as much energy to warm it up. So the beach sand gets uh, hotter faster, so it raises the uh, the temperature over the beach much faster, the hotter it rises, the cooler water, the water over the, uh, the air over the cooled water uh, causes a breeze to come in through the, uh, uh, onto the beach and, and you get this cycle, uh, this cycle, uh, it's basically a convection cycle. Okay, let's say uh, you have one kilogram of liquid water and one kilogram of steam. If you want to increase the temperature of both of them by 10 degrees, which would require more energy? 
Okay, let's go uh, back. Oh, if I, uh, well, it's going to give you the answer, uh, the water. But why? Uh, let's look at the, uh, uh, the steam requires 2,000 uh, joules of energy, whereas water requires 4,000 uh, joules of water. Uh, so the, the answer to this quiz, you have with one kilogram of liquid water and one kilogram of steam, you want to increase the temperature of both by 10 degrees. The water is going to require more energy. Okay, and then we're going to talk about calorimetry. You, the calorimetry, basically the 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 Q cold equals minus Q hot. So the the energy that the cold object receives is equal to the the energy that the uh, hot item uh, lost. And we're going to do an experiment. So. Uh, this is an example. You have a beaker at 25 degrees, uh, water at four, uh, 40 degrees, and aluminum at 37 degrees. Q is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature for each of these. So the sum of these should equal zero. So you, the Q of the water plus the Q of the aluminum plus uh, the uh, uh, Q of the beaker, I think that's supposed to be the beaker, all is going to equal to zero. Um, and let me keep up with my uh, notes here so I don't get lost. All right, so we're going to do an experiment. This will become a little more, uh, a little more evident, I think, when we do the experiment. Uh, we'll do that on Tuesday, or at least I'll have the video available by Tuesday. Okay. Now, latent heat, you know, you have a specific heat uh, to, to raise a particular object one degree. Now, latent heat and phase change, phase change, of course, is going from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. Sometimes you go straight from a solid to a gas, such as carbon dioxide. Uh, so you have latent heats of fusion and vaporization. Um, so the uh, all the Q is equal to the mass times the latent heat, latent heat of fusion or the latent heat of vaporization. Notice there is no change in temperature here. There is no, uh, it's not raising it a, a, a degree. In other words, it, when, when water is frozen, it can be colder than, than uh, 30, 32 or zero degrees C. 32 is the Fahrenheit. Uh, it can be colder. It can, in fact, we're going to do an example. So it's the amount of energy needed to change the phase. So the amount of energy needed to change the phase from ice to water and the amount of energy needed to change the water to steam. That's the latent heat of uh, vaporization. So let's look at water. Um, the latent heat of, uh, uh, well, they have it here. For water, the latent heat of fusion is 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. So it takes uh, uh, 33,300 joules. Um, is that right? No, 333. Uh, well, let's stick with the scientific notation. 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram of uh, uh, ice to turn it into uh, to water. Uh, is that, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. And the latent heat, latent heat of vaporization for that water is 2.26 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. Now let's look at an example. Uh, we're going to start with a just a gram, a gram of uh, of water, and that's just like a a, a couple of drops on a. I, I, I did it, I should have included the photograph, a couple of drops on a little scale pan. Um, and we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna start with it as ice, as a little bit of ice at minus 30 degrees C. So uh, to raise the temperature of the, uh, to raise the temperature of, uh, one gram, which is one times 10 to the minus three kilograms, 
uh, one gram of ice at minus 30 degrees, it raises it up to zero. Uh, if, you, if you look at the table, I'm not gonna go back to it to save time, the energy is, time, the mass times the specific heat of ice is 2090 joules per kilogram per degree C times 30 degrees, uh, that's a change in temperature. We're, all we're doing, we're, it's still ice, we're just raising the temperature of, of that ice. Um, once it, once we get it to zero degrees, now we can do, uh, so that was the um, raising the temperature of the ice. Now we go to uh, changing that ice to water. So the, uh, the energy needed is uh, the mass times the latent heat of fusion, which is uh, one times 10 to the minus three kilograms, that's a gram of ice, times 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. It's, so that you use 333 joules. Okay, now it's all water. Now we're gonna raise that temperature of the water. Uh, we ne need the mass of the water, one gram times uh, 4,190, 4,190, or 4.19 times 10 to 3 joules per kilogram per degree C. Uh, and we, we're we raising it, um, we're raising it to uh, uh, 100 degrees. Uh, and that's this, that's this slope here. And we, we ended up, uh, ended putting, we ended up putting in 419, uh, joules of uh, energy into the system. Now we're 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 going to change phase again. So there's no change in temperature. You can see that it's flat across here. There's no change in temperature. The vertical scale is temperature here. So Q is equal to the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. So it's one gram times two two point two six times ten to the six joules per kilogram. Uh, so we end up with 2.26 times 10 to the 3 joules. And now we're, the last uh, part of this, we're, we're, uh, we're changing the steam from 100 degrees to 120 degrees. So it's the 1 gram times 2.01 times 10 to the 3 joules per kilogram uh, per degree C. That's the specific heat of steam steam times the 20 degrees and we've got 40.2 joules of energy that it took um okay so in total uh the 62.7 the 333 the 4.19 times 10 to the two joules here the 2.26 times 10 to the three joules and the 40.2 joules all of that ends up to 3.11 times 10 to the three joules so it took uh, 3.11 times 10 to the three joules to change a one gram of ice at minus 30 degrees C to uh, one gram of steam uh, at 120 degrees C. Okay, and oh, I haven't kept up with my uh, notes. Let me see if there's any important thing to say at this uh, um Uh, I think it would be interesting. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to assign this as extra credit. Uh, let me write it down here in my notes. Extra credit. Uh, you want to maximize your points in this class. If you if if you go back to these items, uh, these slopes. Of course, these slopes are flat. If these slopes. If you look at these slopes, uh, if you calculate these slopes, uh, it would be interesting to calculate these slopes. Now you're gonna get uh, temperature over um, the, the rise over the run, you're gonna get temperature uh, per energy added. Uh, get the slopes of these and then look at the reciprocal of the slopes for A, C, and E and see how they relate to the specific heats of ice, water, and steam. That's an extra credit. Uh, uh, you can just write it out on a piece of paper, photograph it, or scan it, and send it to me. And I'll, I'll, uh, 
uh, I, I'll keep an extra credit bin uh, available to, you know, give you extra credit when you need it. Okay, let's go. Uh, is it possible to add energy to an isolated material and not have the material's temperature change? Well, let's look at the, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is yes. Why? Just look, let's just look at our graph. Um, let's look at the graph. We're adding energy here, but there's no temperature change. We're adding energy here and there's no temperature change. So yes, in some cases, the material's temperature will change when, uh, when energy is added to the material. In other cases, the material's temperature will not change when energy is added. Um, so, uh, the answer is yes, uh, according to the description given in four. Okay, which curve would have the smallest slope? Assume uh, no phase change takes place. So the smallest slope, the one that requires the, the most energy, so it would be water. Water, if, we, if you go back to your table, the water has the, uh, the highest specific heat, so it would have the, uh, the smallest slope. Uh, and you should prove that with that extra credit assignment I just gave you. Okay, problem solving strategies, calorimetry with phase changes, make a table for all data. Uh, Q equals MC delta T, Q equals plus or minus the mass times the latent heat of fusion, and Q equals plus or minus the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. And apply the conservation of energy, the sum of all the uh, Q sub K is equal to zero, and then you solve it. Okay, let's go on to thermal conduction. Um, here you have a, a pan in direct uh, contact with the uh, uh, with this pan. Um, it's, it's heating it up. Conduction makes the metal handle of a cooking pan hot. Um, so just the conduction uh, through the pan and to the handle uh, will make it hot. Now the thermal conduction, uh, you can look at it as you have on this side, you have temperature hot. On this side, you have temperature cold. You have the area, and you have this delta X. So the energy transfer for, from T hot to T cold, the power is equal to Q divided by delta T. That's uh, the heat divided by time uh, is proportional to the area times the change in temperature time times uh, divided by the thickness. Delta X is the thickness. Okay, here is uh, the opposite ends of this rod are in thermal contact with energy reservoirs at different temperatures. So you have T hot, T cold. You have a length uh, between them L. So delta T is equal to T hot minus T cold. Delta X is equal to L. So delta T over delta X is equal to T hot minus T cold over L. And uh, P is equal to uh, K times the area, uh, K times the area times T, basically delta T over L, and K is equal to a, a constant uh, called the thermal con uh, conductivity, and it's the prob proportionality constant that depends on the material. Um, here is some thermal conductivities. Uh, of metals, uh, uh, 238 for aluminum, two, 397 for copper. Uh, you can see lead is, is uh, very low, 34.7, iron 79.5. Uh, and then gases, these are even lower. Air is 0 0.0234. Uh, oxygen is 0 0.0238, just almost like air. And then nonmetals, asbestos, 0 0.08, concrete 0 0.8, glass 0 0.8, ice 2, uh, and so on. So these are some th thermal conductivities. These are those, uh, those uh, that K in that equation. Okay, now home insulation, it uses a, we have some R values, and those R values uh, are, uh, there, you have different R values, and it's in English, it's in uh, engineering US customer units rather than SI units, and 
Uh, these can be, and that's British thermal units. Um, so you can have uh, a, the wall in the house is, has wood paneling, drywall, insulation, sheathing, and uh, uh, wood siding. So all of those uh, have have a different R rating, and so you have to sum the, all of those up. So the Q divided by the delta T, the time it takes to, uh, uh, basically it's like the power of the joules per uh, second, uh, is the area times the, temp the hot temperature to the cold temperature, time divided by the sum of all of those R values. Uh, here's some R values. Uh, notice the, the values are uh, feet squared times Fahrenheit, uh, hours divided by uh, BTU. And I'm not going to spend much time on that. Convection. Uh, convection is the, you know, just the, the transfer in energy by the uh, movement of a substance. In, case, in this case, the movement of the substance is the hot air molecules. Um, you can see the, this is a thermo, thermograph of a pot that's uh, boiling the colder water at the bottom uh, I mean, heats up and rises to the top, the cooler water comes and it, uh, you get this convection current um, and you warm the water in this pot. Same with the radiator. The radiator raises the temperature, raises the temperature of the air, it goes up, uh, the cooler temperature at the top comes down and it, you just get this uh, convection current and you warm the, the uh, uh, you warm the, the room, you get it in with uh, water, you can get the, the warm layer at top, the thermocline and the cool layer and, the, and so you get this circulation of, of uh, water. You know, radiation, the radiation um, heating by radiation is uh, power is equal to the sigma, uh, which the sigma is the uh, Stefan Boltzmann's constant. A is the, uh, the Stefan Boltzmann's constant. There is 5.669 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared uh, Kelvin to the fourth. Uh, uh, A is the area. E is the emissivity of the uh, of the uh, surface and that can go anywhere from zero to to one um that's the uh the uh let's see yeah that's the emissivity okay uh radiation uh we get about 1370 uh joules of electromagnetic radiation from the sun um for each square meter at the top of the Earth's uh, atmosphere. Uh, this radiation is mainly visible light, but it can also be infrared or ultraviolet light. Um, so, you know, we get a lot of energy from the, from the sun. A lot of it can be uh, trapped. Uh, a lot of that energy can be trapped by clouds um, on a, a cool, clear night. Uh, it's dry. You don't, you know, with low humidity, no clouds. It radiates, you get radiation uh, cooling. It, the warm air radiates uh, out and it, you can get a very cool night on a, a clear, dry night. Okay, uh, the P net is equal to the uh, uh, Stefan Boltzmann's, the, the constant uh, sigma times A and then emissivity times T to the fourth minus uh, T0 to the 4. Uh, that's the net radiation. Okay, uh, the, here's a uh, uh, that house that they showed at the beginning. Blue and purple indicate areas of uh, least energy loss, and white and yellow indicate areas of greatest energy loss. And then here we, we have a thermograph of a woman. Unfortunately, her uh, left breast is diseased, and it's uh, uh, a lot warmer. Um, so that's a way of detecting um, you know, disease. And then you have radi these little thermometers that uh, measure the radiation coming off the eardrum and gives you the temperature. 
All right. Uh, areas near co a cold ocean or other cold body of water often experience a sea breeze during the late morning, particularly on warm, sunny days. The process of energy transfer most directly associated with the development of the sea breeze is conduction, conve convection, radiation, or none of these. It's convection. Uh, okay, a Dewar flask. A Dewar flask uh, keeps hot things hot and uh, cold things cold. Uh, and there's a little evacuated, evacuated area uh, between the outside surface and a silver surface on the inside. Uh, the silver surface helps uh, retain the heat, and this is how your your thermos uh, works. It maintains the heat. I know, or cold. I know I have a a drinking uh, thermos that I can put ice in the at night. In the morning, there's still plenty of ice in the in the uh, in this stainless steel um, uh, drinking cup that I have. Okay, climate change and greenhouse gases. Uh, I'm not gonna spend much time on that. You're welcome to, to read it, um, but we need to get on. Here's the summary of the, uh, the chapter and we're gonna end it right here.